And welcome to another episode of LCTV. I'm Erin Van Slyke. I'm Alex Stamos. And I'm Matt Clark. And as you can see, this is a special episode. It's our Halloween episode. So we're going to start out with a brief history of Halloween. Did you know the brief history of Halloween? Halloween is a time of celebration and superstition among kids and adults. Originally, the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain star traditions regarding Halloween. Samhains would light bonfires, wear costumes to ward off ghosts, and name the festival of sorts All Hallows' Eve, and later over time has come, to know, has come to what we now know as Halloween. Over time, Halloween has evolved into fun activities to do with kids such as trick-or-treat, dressing up in costumes, and carving pumpkins. A little Halloween trivia for you. One quarter of all the candy sold annually in the U.S. is purchased for Halloween. In 1964, Helen File of Green Lawn, New York, was arrested for handing out arsenic waste treats as a prank on teens she deemed too old for trick-or-treating. Jack-o'-lanterns originated in Ireland as hollowed-out turnips with candles placed in them and kept evil ghosts away and spirits on the Samhain holiday. Also, 86% of Americans decorate their homes in celebration of Halloween. And in 2009, Halloween costume sales exceeded $6 billion. Adult-oriented costumes account for 62% of those sales. And speaking of costumes, if you're looking to make your kid look absolutely foolish, the top 10 most demeaning children Halloween costumes has just been released, starting off with UPS Delivery Man. What do you guys think about that? I don't but do like, short shorts. Is he going to wear the little short shorts? Or the little, brown little tight brown short shorts with, the, the, high, high with the high socks. Great. That is really demeaning. Can't really be, as, terrible. Ba can't be as bad as the Confederate soldier, though. Probably a little too soon for that. Confederate <laughs> We'll get to that in a second. Um, the next one on the list is a hobo, which... That's a really easy costume, though. It's easy. I mean, it's, it kind of is like I put my kids in his old dumpy clothes. I mean, that's not very fair. <laughs> what do you think about that one, Matt? You know, I, I think the hobo is a little outdated. You know, it, might, it might make a comeback, though, but... Uh, a little stiff and a little bad. Yeah, or just don't shower for a week. You probably could pull it off. Exactly. My personal favorite costume from when I was young was, was Jason. That, that, that horror character really captured me, and I was excited to be him one time. Jason? Really? Well, yeah, I was, kind of scared me a little bit. I was, I was never personally Jason as a kid, but... Um, What's the next one? The next one on the list we have is... Yeah. Well, I still can't understand this to this day, is Wonder Bread. Matt, Wonder what... Bread? Matt, what... Okay. Aaron, what do you think of Wonder Bread? I, okay, well, Wonder Bread, I mean, it's bread, I guess, that's kind of weird. Is it, a, is, it, is it a loaf of bread or is it going to be like a piece of is bread? Is it a single slice of bread or exactly? Like, I think either way it's kind of a weird costume. I don't know how you would do it, though. I guess it would be really interesting to see how they would make a Wonder Bread costume. Either way, I think it's absolutely hilarious, and I would definitely give that kid some extra candy. Wouldn't you love to see like, what they, because like, you know how they always take like a pumpkin or something and they make it into like a sexy costume? It would be hilarious to me, like Wonder Bread. Just Wonder Bread is just just <laughs> a little skimpy packaging. <laughs> Um, next one on the list. We don't light on the plastic. <laughs> <laughs> the next one on the list. I hope you know what this is because I have no idea. The Ravager. Do you know what that means? The Ravager. The ra We're gonna skip the Ravager. I don't even know what that means, <laughs> but I'm guessing it's extremely demeaning. It must be demeaning <laughs> since it's number ten, nine, eight, seven, six on the list. <laughs> counting. That's why I'm on the st on the on the desk here. Um, number five is sushi. I like to eat sushi, but I don't know if I'd want to dress my child up as sushi. A raw fish. Now, what I think would be really creative is if you have like six kids and, and set, you made them eat, made them eat California roll yes, or, and <laughs> gave them great. each different kind of sushi, and just set them all in a little line or a group of rows of three. Know what Matt thinks about sushi, sushi as a costume. I'm sure he loves sushi. I bet he does. Yeah. He's probably eating it right now. That's probably where he wants. Yeah, it's like not, I'm sure he got hungry. Yeah, for roast turkey. For roast turkey. Next That's the next on our list. list. <laughs> roast turkey. It seems a little bit premature, seeing as Thanksgiving is a month later. Yeah, it's a little weird. Like, like an actual, like, do you think it has, like, little bones sticking out of it and stuff? Like, his hands and he's walking around? I, I feel like it's got a little bit of meat on it and then the <laughs> bone, <laughs> a little bit of meat on it and then the bone legs. That's, that's, and then no head. That's the, uh, that's the image I got. Honestly, all these costumes are really creative, though. It's they are creative, and I it's mean, making me tempted <laughs> to be a roast turkey. But the next one on the list we have is a whoopee cushion. Now, that still doesn't make any sense to me, how you would go about doing that. I guess, like, you would probably wear, like, a hat as, like, the top of the whoopee cushion, the thing that you, like, you know? Yeah. And then, like, your face would be, like, right before it gets, like, all big and round. What would be good is if, like, the entire costume is actually functional. 
and so, <laughs> so say like you're a college student, you go to a party being a whoopee cushion, <laughs> everyone would be just pushing you the whole time. Exactly. I, I think it'd be the life of the party. But then again, you're also, if it's, you're doing it to a child, you're calling your child a big fart, so that's not right. Yeah, that's why it's the meaning list. <laughs> and that's why it's number three. Number two we have is a baby hatchet. Oh, that's just awful. That's Obviously, that, that's terrible. That's, that's pretty straightforward. I don't think we need to go into much detail about that one. I think, I think that might be child abuse, actually. <laughs> and number one on the list is a toilet. Oh, something that you crap in. That's good. Something that you crap in. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wonder if like he could double the toilet bowl as his candy basket. Oh, that would be really cool. Right, that'd be... That'd be like, you can make like the bowl like his stomach or something. Could yeah, and then like when he goes trick or treat, they just throw her in the toilet. Just throw her in the toilet. Throw her in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for the top 10 most demeaning children's costumes. My pleasure. Don't know where Matt went, but um, that's our news for Halloween, our history of Halloween. And coming up next is an interview with El Progreso because it is International Hispanic Month. Do you know that? I had no idea. I actually didn't know that either. But now we do. We'll find out what it's about, so stay tuned. And then after that, we're going to do pumpkin carving. Are you excited for that? I've never done it before in my life. I'm so, so excited I to am teach you how to carve a pumpkin. I'm so excited. If you saw our cooking show, this is going to be really it's interesting. Gonna be, you it's better stick around. It's going to be a good time. Stick around. president of El Progreso. So October is not only a month to celebrate ghosts and witches, but it's also Hispanic Heritage Month. With us today is Janelle, and she's going to tell us a little bit about what El Progreso does, and it's a fairly new organization, so a lot of people don't know about it. So she's going to just tell us about some of the cultural issues that come about and why they started the club and everything like that. So. Do you uh, think that your club is one of the understated clubs that Lemoyne has here? Definitely, along with a lot of other multicultural clubs on campus, because people usually think that it's an all-speaking club, that if you're not Hispanic, you can't be part of the club, and that's not the case. And that's like the stereotype we're trying to break this year. Yeah, that was one of my questions, is if you had to be Hispanic. Yeah, no. <laughs> you don't, okay. Because I see everyone wearing sweatshirts, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure. No, yeah, definitely. We have people from all different types of ethnicities, and we embrace them. That's what we want in our group. So do you guys learn about Hispanic culture? Is that like what you do? Like, tell me a little bit about yeah. what you guys do in your club. Well, this year, um, um, I tend to bring like different kinds of foods to like different our club meetings. And that alone like shows you a lot about the culture and what kind of foods we eat. And it helps, and it helps <laughs> yeah, and it helps recruit people. And also, like I noticed that that's a really good way of recruiting people because the desk school doesn't do a good job feeding us. <laughs> exactly. So, you, so that's is good. it like stuff that you've learned from like your family yeah. to cook? Or yeah. Things that like do you cook as Hispanic food? Like arroz con leche, which is basically rice and milk, but is like really sweetened. Um, our first meal we had was our first club meeting and it was up in the heights and we had um spaghetti but like the dominican style because we use a lot of seasoning oh is it really spicy it's not spicy it's just well seasoned i don't know how to explain like goya it's a certain season that comes in a bottle but it makes a difference a huge difference that's awesome so obviously food is a big part of culture there yeah so it's a good way to get people recruited and show them what you guys are all about. Yeah, right? I agree. So how exactly did you, you said you recruit new members by feeding them, but how else do you recruit members? Um, well, campus groups is new now, and the more active you are on there, the more people like from all over campus get to see and hear about your um, clubs on campus, not only Progresso, but other clubs also, and that helps a lot. Other than that, word of mouth, it's a good and help. And the sweatshirts. You guys ever come yeah. to sell those? <laughs> yeah. It makes me want to join because I really want one of those sweatshirts. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that uh, multicultural clubs on campus are more or less understood by the fellow Lemoyne community? Um, reality is no, because we do have a lot of stereotypes, and that's just the reality of things. 
like a lot of people, like you said. You're right. The, yeah. Everyone thinks they're <laughs> the show, and it's so stereotypical. Yeah, and we don't have our club meetings, and we don't speak, like, Spanish throughout the whole thing. Like, if we throw a little word here and there, you do have someone saying, hey, what does that mean? And you learn a new word. But it's fun. It keeps the club interesting. Well, because... Obviously, if you're teaching a Spanish course, you're going to learn how to talk in Puerto Rican. But just like in our culture, you know, in American culture, you have slang. So yeah. You learn a lot of <laughs> slang going there. It's probably really fun. Yeah. So um, what is your favorite thing, first thing, about being from Hispanic descent? Well, we already spoke about the, the food. food. The food is I awesome. Food. <laughs> but um, It's much better than Irish food. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um. Basically, besides our food, I would say the music and dance. We're really big on dances. And going back to that, on November 12th, we're going to have our Latino banquet, which we have every month. And this year, our theme is going to be Footloose. And it's basically going to incorporate all the different like Hispanic dances, like samba. Do you know every Hispanic dance? Um, me, personally, for the most part, I'm good, yeah. I would yeah. say yeah, but I don't. Well, you know more than I do. It's okay. <laughs> I don't want to be put on the spot. No music, please. <laughs> my dance name. You don't want to see my attempted Hispanic dance. <laughs> well, before the banquet, we do host um, salsa classes and bachata classes too. And that's all through El Progreso. Yeah. You host these classes. That's yeah. really awesome. But it's open not only to our members but to the whole um, Lemoyne community. Do you know when those are? It's right before our banquet, so our banquet is November 12th, so the week before, that whole week, we'll be giving classes. On every type of dance that you guys Yeah. Do? That's awesome. What's your favorite dance? I would say mm, merengue, like the really fast type. I like the... I can't yeah, it's that. really... <laughs> I know what you're talking about, but I can't do it's it. It's really like a two-step. It's the most simple dance ever. It's just about getting the rhythm down. Getting the beat, which... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need to take a samba class, I think. <laughs> So since this is uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, what do you guys have planned for the month? Um, we want to do a movie November night. 12th, yeah, that's um, out, uh, next month. Uh huh. We want to do a movie night based on this um, documentary from Luis Vargas, and it's called Dominican Blues, um, and it's basically about the genre bachata, which I had mentioned before, and it's the most common one because it's easy to learn. It's like a three-step. And um, basically, it's talking about its origin in the Dominican Republic. And a lot of people don't know, but this genre originated in the slums in the poor, from the poor people. And it's just interesting to know that, because now it's in the United States, and it's a big deal, and everybody dances in. It's a good thing now. But back then, a lot of people were looked down upon. You couldn't listen to the music. You couldn't let alone dance if you were dancing Kinda this. Kind of sounds like Footloose. Yeah, <laughs> if you were dancing this, you out. were a prostitute. Like, it was really bad. If, as a woman dancing bachata, you were, like, a nobody. And it's the blues in the Dominican Republic because all you sing about is, like, being heartbroken and all the, like, sad stuff of being poor because this was their country. music. Yeah, but now it's, like, embraced, and it's amazing. That's great. Yeah, where it's a really good documentary. Where's your family from? I'm from Dominican Republic. Yeah. My family is, so I say I am, but I was born here. That's why I asked your family. Yeah. Really that's mm -hmm. how it goes. So. Yeah, but I consider myself Dominican. Well, yeah, and obviously you're president of <laughs> El Progreso, <laughs> so you definitely embrace it. Who knows, it one day. Thank you for it. Our next president. Your culture with us. <laughs> yeah, and but who knows, our next president might not even be Hispanic, and that's okay yeah. as long as we recruit members that are Hispanic and we could learn from each other and that's wouldn't be fine. So basically El Progreso isn't for the Hispanics. It's more yes. a, it's a learning experience. Yeah. To experience food, culture. And all their cultures are also like welcome because we believe that through multi multiculturalism we increase creativity among Lemoyne because we all learn from each other. And it's more fun when we have different people together. I'm from the city so I'm used to that. Yeah, so you're yeah. just adding one community on together. Yeah. That's great. So um, coming this month, you guys are going to have a movie night and all that, and I'm sure signs will be posted sometime. Yeah, in campus groups. Or two. Yeah. yeah, in campus groups. Mm -hmm. Great. So thank you very much, Janelle. It was great you're having welcome. you. You're welcome. We learned a lot. Hopefully I'll learn Samba. I'll take a class. 
definitely i'll let you know (laughs) (laughs) thanks very much i'm your miss head girl ttv sports oh yes we are and And lots of sports teams suck wow you are very negative today i'm not gonna lie but one team that's on the upswing is men's soccer we're gonna start off with them go for it so in men's soccer, Lemoyne won their third straight conference game when they defeated Stonehill College 2 to nothing. After a scoreless first half, as well as being outshot 4 to 0 by Stonehill, the Dolphins broke the tie thanks in part to a goal by freshman midfielder Jesse Carr in the 75th minute. Shortly after, Lemoyne sealed the victory when freshman midfielder Alexander Lautner scored in the 78th minute and assisted by Zach McNabb. Matthew Silva, who was just named Northeast 10 Goalkeeper of the Week, recorded his seventh shutout in the win. At 7-2 now in the conference and at 8-5 and and 1 overall, the the Dolphins will defend their three-game winning streak this week against Merrimack. Men's golf actually uh, closed out their fall season while competing at the fifth annual Charger Challenge at Spook Rock Golf Course in Suffern, New York last weekend. Standouts for Lemoyne were Anthony Viskowicz and Dan Moulter, who both finished tied for 21st overall, shooting 12 over. As a team, Lemoyne finished 7th out of the 11 teams that competed. This was their last event of the fall season and will continue action in the spring at the Mike Bello Invitational on April 11th. Well, not a lot going on in Lemoyne sports these past few weeks, so move on to the NFL where there was a lot of action this week. a lot of action. Indianapolis Colts are now 0-6 in the season, thanks in part to the absence of their Pro Bowl quarterback Peyton Manning. And this proves that without the sure win Hall of Famer, the Colts are a completely incompetent team with no sense of organization (laughs) and no sense of teamwork. Who would have thought one player would make such a difference? Well... Other than everybody who knows anything about Peyton Manning, he's, well, he's the all-star of that team. <laughs> he's way too dope. This is weird. But, yeah, the Packers flipped that number, and they're 6-0 after crushing the Rams 24-3. Aaron Rodgers, although I hate him, he's still good. He went 17 for 28 with 310 yards and three touchdowns. Who's yeah. Brett Favre, honestly? I don't know. It's Favre, right? Favre, whatever. Moving on to the AFC. The Bills, who up until this weekend were forced to be reckoned with in the AFC East and NFL in general, fell short against Eli Manning and the Giants 27-24. to We can tell that some Bills fans in the house, our floor director Chris is going crazy right now. And I'm happy for you too. That means the Patriots, they're up ahead in the AFC mm. East now. Either way you look at it, I'm not a fan of any New York team, so I'm happy that the Bills are at least losing and the Giants are winning. Well... Tom Brady and the Patriots are the only thing that stands out in Boston as a positive. Right. And um, unfortunately, my football team, the Eagles. Let's move to Philly. Yes. They they only, uh, they won their second game. I'm proud of them. And they're uh, so far dismal season, defeating the Redskins by 7, 20 to 13, which considering everyone saying that they were an unstoppable force from hell before the season started, they suck. I mean... Every player on there is dope, but they can't do anything together. I mean, Vic just, I, I love think, him. But I think just... Vince Wilfork has more interceptions than Rogers Cromarty and, mm. and Samuel and all their historical secondary players. Don't be a hater. Let's move on to MLB. Okay. St. Louis Cardinals crushed the Brewers and are now advancing into the World Series once again. Game one of the World Series is tonight against the Rangers at 8.05 on Fox. Albert Pulos and the Cardinals will try to rack up the... Rack up the digits. CJ, you wrote this script. Oh, yeah. Digits, right, rack up boss. the digits against Wilson and the Rangers. It should be an interesting matchup for sure. What do you think going into this matchup? I think I'm hot right now, but I mean, the it's Yankees. It's hot in the studio. Yankees blew it. The yeah, Yankees blew yeah, it. The, the, the Sox, Sox didn't Sox even make didn't, it. Yeah, they had no chance. But, but I mean, who do you like in the series? I think the Cardinals are going to pull it out. I mean, they got Carpenter starting this first game, they have a better overall lineup. I mean, they're just a powerhouse. Now, there, I'm going to disagree with you on that. I think the Rangers are going to pull off this win. They were there last year, so they have the experience. They know what it takes to be at the World Series. What do you mean? The they have a powerhouse lineup that is unmatched among what the MLB. What do you mean? Nelson Cruz. Whoa. Raul, uh, Whoa. Adrian Beltre. Josh Whoa. Hamilton. I can keep going. Do it. CJ Wilson, great pitching. I'm great pitching staff. Natalia I was, I was expecting you to freeze. When no. I said, Keep going. They you have what it takes to win the World Series this year. They're going to pull it out. Rangers in five. Mm. You heard it here. Did you just say Rangers in five? Yep. 
Wow. No. No, no. I'm putting five dollars. Well, I can down, tell right? that CJ is stuck right now. Right now. Right now, that the Cardinals win it in six games. Well, CJ is stuck right now because he's clearly against his mind. But that's all we have here against for the. Mind. Out of your mind against he's, mind. he's out of his That's mind. all we have for the Dan and Dave show with Dan and CJ today. I'm Dan. I'm carving a pumpkin. This is a pumpkin. It's a pumpkin. I'm Mary Van Slyke. And I'm Alex Stamos. So there is something seriously wrong with you because you have never carved a pumpkin for Halloween. Well, then let's get to it. All right. So what I did was I drew what we're going to make the top out of, his little hat, as you can see, if you guys want to zoom in on that, show that you, you got to draw it out. Pumpkin carving is really, you really have to draw everything out. You can't just like half away at it. Because then it's not going to look good. Yeah, you'll probably mess up. So what we're going to do is we're going to carve. We just got carving tools at Wegmans, so you know, it's nothing special. You can use a steak knife, whatever. It's probably really dangerous to use that. This is actually a really good carving tool. <laughs> And you're just going to go through and carve where your lines are. You say you got that at Wegmans? Yeah. I love Wegmans. Me too. It's my favorite place in the whole world. All right. Boom. You got it all. Do you want to shave that whole thing? <laughs> wow. Um, do you want to <laughs> shave that whole thing off? Like just cut. You're going to cut <laughs> from right here. All the way down to get rid of all those seeds, you're gonna throw them right out. Alrighty. And as you can see, <laughs> I won't eat it. Whole pumpkin full of guts that we need to get out. Yeah, what my mom always said was she would take the seeds out and then she would roast them for mm. us and put salt on it, and it was really good. Yummy. It's much yummier without all the guts, I promise. It's like a pumpkin liver. <laughs> you just take out all the seeds? You have to take out all of the guts too. Like. Well, if you did give me the handy dandy tool. Handy dandy notebook. <laughs> An empty pumpkin. Okay. As you can see, his little top sits on. As soon as you put it on. <laughs> see, this is what I always do. I always twist it like a million times to make sure that it fits. Uh, no, I think you just had it. No, Did I back, have back, it? back up. Oh wow! Yeah, right oh, there. good job, John Stamos. Yeah, no, that, yeah, no problem. Lantern. You're gonna help with this because I'm sure you're an artist, right? Yeah. See, I always find like the part on the pumpkin that is like weird. Let's see if we can make a scar out of that little mark there. So we're gonna give him like a little. I feel like we're doing show and tell for the little kids. <laughs> I always do something like that. So it kind of looks like. A little scar on someone's face. A nose and a mouth. You can make mouth circular, you can make it like that that you see on there. Okay. You wanna, so wanna go what, ahead is, and what is this for? That's you know a scar on the side of his face. Yeah, but why do you circle it? I didn't circle it. What's all this? We're on? gonna make the scar. You know what I mean? But it's gonna be <laughs> I'll show you. Okay. I'll show you. What I will do the other eye. All right, let's see if you can do it. My head itches and I have guts all over me. These eyes are going to be disproportionate. 